Hello everyone, welcome to another Green Dragons Game Club. Without us, they never feel like winners. Without them, we couldn't look so good. So again, we're based out of Westchester, Pennsylvania, and you're in the area. Do me a favor, reach out to us. We're uh, going to get back into the swing. I do want to apologize to everyone who does watch my our channel uh, for our drought um, of videos. Uh, my name is Mark. I'm Sir MC2015 up on the Ninth Age boards. So a couple reasons for the drought, and I definitely wanted to explain that. And the drought may continue for about two more months, and then it will be fully lifted, and we'll be back to making videos here. But a couple things going on. First, um, had a beautiful uh, baby girl uh, that was born April 24th. So that definitely slowed me down because um, basically the one who who hosts everything, plans everything. I do it for my gaming group as to which day we're going to meet and when and where. Uh, so unfortunately, um, all that got set to aside uh, due to personal reasons as well as selling my house, buying a house, and just work life in general. So a <laughs> lot. And uh, top it off, I became um, head of playtesting. So a lot of the stuff that I was playing, because I would definitely have been playing in the interim, I can't make videos and post, and I do apologize. But the drought will be over, and um, Ryan, Dan, uh, Brett, and a couple others will definitely be picking up the slack from where I from where I may be falling off a little bit because I can't always post my games. Um, but we will definitely be continuing to put up videos, and hopefully you will enjoy the content. And again, one thing we definitely focus try to focus in on with uh, my group anyway is describing the tactics, not going, oh my god, here's this kid out, but, you know, what the tactics are. Because I think if you have good, solid tactics, you're actually going to do extremely well with this game, which is one of the reasons why I love it. Uh, so, getting on to our main event, we have Ogre Cons, played by Ryan, uh, a.k.a. Pretty Boy, up on the Ninth Age website, versus my own Dwarven Holds. Now, one thing that we're doing is we're actually going to Buckeye Battles next month. It is July 7th. I'm um, looking forward to it. Those of you who are thinking about going, I think it may be full, but, you know, reach out, uh, see what's available. Uh, I know lists are due on the 20th if you want full points, so I definitely um, need to turn around and take care of that. Also, um, he and I are going to be in the doubles tournament, uh, and he will be playing... His army of choice being uh, Dreadals, and I'll be playing my army of choice being Dwarves for that. So we're preparing for Buckeyes. We're preparing more, more or less for that 2,000-point tournament um, or the 4,000-point tournament for the uh, doubles. We need to see if we want to tweak our list because, again, really might need to go in there with something a little bit different. Uh, not so much our, our same bills because you in the doubles tournament, you only get 2,000 points. But we decided to play 4,500. Uh, just to see which toys we liked. Uh, and we're more focusing on the dwarves because he has his list pretty much set. And I'm going, I just don't know. I just don't know. So I don't. So here's our board. We did diagonal deployment and we also did uh, capture the standards. So he chose. Oh dear God. He chose the. Small group of warriors that are on my left flank. Uh, just realized that one now. Um, my other group of warriors on the right flank. And I think I only had two choices or three choices for him. No, yeah, I chose the ones right there in the middle. Um, oh, no, I lied. We did not do capture standards. We did breakthrough. That was uh, the end game. So... I don't, did not post our army list because, again, um, one, essence of time, two, just kind of looking at things. So we do have some proxies on the board. Uh, sitting there, the free-roaming um, Tusker is actually a cannon, and the goblin chariots are actually uh, scratapults. And that's it. Everything on my side is exactly what it looks like. You got a unit of miners that will be coming in ambushing. They have shields and throwing weapons. Um, a flame cannon, organ gun. The cannon on my side, because I have everything in boxes, all I have out are the dwarves that I actually use. And I have about four bolt throwers, four ballistas, and they're all packed up. Um, but the cannon in this game is actually a bolt thrower. I wanted to see how the flame cannon worked and the flame cannon bolt thrower uh, combination worked. 
because I know how the organ gun works. Organ gun is a very good, a very solid weapon. But what about the can, the flame cannon? It, it's changed because it used it used to obliterate units, obliterate them. Infantry, you were done. All right, I stopped fielding it because my friends who I played with hated it. I still remember playing Dan one time and just clearing off fields and fields of infantry. But getting back to case in point, and then the bolt thrower. What can the bolt thrower do? Uh, the first uh, hit has D D three wounds, and then after that, only one wound. And it goes from strength six to strength three. Armor piercing uh, six plus all the time. Uh, it, it's a tough call. I mean, it's wounding them on threes, but it's hitting on fours or fives, threes. If I get if I use my engineer and he's within half range. Uh, it's, you know, that that's literally, that's all, all I can say. Um, that is a picture because my phone took a picture twice and hence why it's blurry. So here's a bird's eye view or a uh, field view of what the characters see when they uh, staring off across from one another. And that's it. So here's the end. He dropped first because um, he wanted first turn. So this is the end of turn one. And he really doesn't do much. I think he maybe kills a couple models and uh, from shooting, but that 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 was it. Not much. Again, just another view um, of the battlefield. Um, he did cast a spell. I think he killed maybe one deep watch there. Um, he did cast a spell, and he was using I forget which lore. I think it was thaumaturgy. Where you roll a d6 and and he rolls a d6 and you take a wound uh, with no armor saves allowed, the difference of the two dice. So I'm like, all right, you know, let's I let it go through. Let's see what happens because I just want to make sure I stop that comet because uh, he did get the comet uh, as one of his spells. But I ate it, destroying that spell for the rest of the game. And he put one wound on my BSB. I can live with one wound. So shooting, did a couple wounds over there. And then that's it. So let's see. So I did advance up. Now this is actually during his turn, uh, turn two. And sorry for not having the dice to uh, show the separation. Um, he's keeping everything at bay. He's trying to kill me with shooting, and it's working. So once his scratapult started being able to actually fire, um, they did five wounds uh, with a scratapult to my deep watch. Which was painful. I mean, right that that right there is almost earns back its points. Um, and that was basically it. So my turn, uh, I, that may have been still his turn one. So my turn one, I turn around, I chaff up his um, his big monster there. I wanted to him to charge in that flank, overrun, get hit with the king and the unit of deep wash right in the flank. Take all those strength five hits. He's only T six, and do enough wounds to him to say bye bye. Um, but he did not take the bait. Over here again, I gotta stop with this bird's eye view unless I, there's something pretty going on. Um, his turn. He slid his um, monster over. He's hiding his giant away from the bolt thrower because it's still only T five. Um, and I mean that's it. He moved up. He edged up. Uh, he wanted to try to charge in. The problem is, is everything was an individual charge, and going on individual charges, especially again, and he's played my army enough times to know this. It is a rough concept to do. So let's see over here. I have no idea what this is a picture of. I really don't. I'm sorry. So here's um, my the end of my turn two. I turn around. I edge up. Um, I get some shooting off. If you notice, my uh, bolt, my um, organ gun is disappeared because he did manage to kill. That's why he was trying to shoot out with his cannons and everything else. It took uh, two rounds to do it. Um, and you see my dead pile growing over there. Meanwhile, I do have to say I am enjoying the flame cannon. The flame cannon turn around and he's got a unit there in the ruins. It automatically hits you, and then it's doing D three 
plus one per rank up to the maximum number of models in that rank. Uh, strength four uh, at range 24 inches, strength uh, five if you're on 12 or less. So overall, I'm real, real happy with the flame cannon. It, it's doing its job of killing um, his infantry. So I figure elves, um, goblins, even orcs at uh, T4, even um, uh, one wound uh, orcs uh, versus the three wound um, ogres. It's youthful. It, it has its purpose in the army. So I'm real happy about that. Um, so on to his shooting phase again. Again, those stratapults. His cannons aren't doing anything. His stratapults are laying waste to my deep watch. Now my deep watch is almost combat ineffective. Um, and going up against uh, the tribesmen, I don't know. That, that won't be pretty. Uh, but I need to get rid of some of his chaff. So I charge in with um, my spears into his tusker cav and... And that was that. Um, he may have uh, he may have charged me. No, I charged him. I definitely charged him. Sound, sound like Rayman? Yep, that will definitely charge. Definitely charge. Uh, anyway, so during close combat, I ended up pulverizing um, uh, his Tusker Cav because my BSPs in that unit. They're toughness five. He has strength ten against toughness five, so he's just laying waste to them, doing basically three wounds a pop. Uh, and then the spears, of course, have lethal strike against that unit because it's monstrous cavalry. My deep watch charges unit of infantry, and my lovely little guys there uh, chaff him up. So during his turn, you know, show that he tries to charge my deep watch with his giant, only to fail, and that's because I still have the banner of dismay in there. Um, and it's a tactic I've done lots of different times where I've had, I've charged into the flank with a giant, uh, cause I've been, um, working on my, um, lizards of the dark gods, um, trying to, trying to get those rules down. And like I said, I was doing some play testing, but, um, using a giant in the flank as a flanking model, it's really a good tactic, a really good use. Never throw it straight up, straight down someone's throat. Let it be a, pardon me, let it be a flanker. And that's it. Um, during my turn, the miners uh, do come on the board, but must not even be turn two yet. Um, so again, that's uh, his movement. He finally reached it. He did charge the uh, hand gunners, and that he was too close for me to stand and shoot. Um, he pulverized them, and then overruns right into the cannon. And do do do. Engineer's dead. Everybody's dead. Wow. Oh, well. Give it a good old college try. And that's it. So during my turn, I tried to charge in. I had it set up. I just needed nines. Everything had swift stride. Um, so two out of three should have gotten in instead of one out of three. And the Spears failed with my BSB, and my Junior failed to get in. And it was very disheartening for me to charge into his um, big block with a decimated, decimated unit of uh, Deep Watch. And here's the thing is, they all have the uh, Iron Fist, so they're Initiative 3. Meanwhile, uh, if you notice where his um, unit of infantry is on the far side there, let me go back a picture or two. So he started moving them up because it was again it's a breakthrough scenario. So he moves them up, and they're actually right by the wall. Next turn they'd be into my deployment zone. My flame cannon opens up. So nope, going the wrong way. So now look, I clear it out basically a rank and a half. Rank and a half with a single flame cannon shot. That was gold right there. I mean, T3, which is average, and it's getting um, basically uh, because I had a, I think I had a flank there. It was just, it just opened up. So bravo to that flame cannon, and that's again him charging the infant, 
him charging infantry. Or oh, the reason why um, is I failed a terror test with my um, engineer here. So he fled and he redirected into the um, handgunners. And then he charged with the uh, scraplings. And, the scrap and he ran like two inches. So the scraplings actually caught him. Um, so going over here, again, the flame cannon opened up and killed basically the all but one of the scraplings there, but I, they got their point because of the engineer. And that's it here. So going into that combat, he kills all that's left of my all that's left of my deep watch. My deep watch is gone to a man. Gone. He gets the point for for that unit. It's an expensive unit. He gets those points. All I have left is my king and my runic smith. I'm a dwarf. That's all I need. So I think I end up winning that combat, um, or I may, or maybe I lost by like one. Um, and then that's it. During my turn, I end up charging Junior in um, to yeah. So here's here's one turn. You see how many ogres he has. Here's the next turn. I threw a junior in there. He took one or one or two out. The king took one or two out, and the runic smith is actually doing two wounds a pop. Um, I had reformed uh, to take the charge from the giant because I didn't want a flank charge there. Oh no, he did get. Hmm. Pardon me. I missed a. Um, I missed a picture here. So he actually does charge into the. Um, I'm pretty sure that we said that was a flank, but he still had to be touching my BSB. So my BSB drops his hold stone, and I do five wounds to that giant. Um, still kicking. Um, I won combat. I do a combat reform, and then that's it. Uh, there are not as many ogres as there were a while ago. Meanwhile, his rock -a rock is on a rampage and is about ready to kill my flame cannon. So this is the last picture I have. He never got a chance to move his um, uh, scraplings or hobgoblins or goblins, whatever they are, uh, out really out of that water feature there. Because, uh, again, they fled, then they rallied, and then they could have only moved four inches. And we were doing the breakthrough scenario where I, my dwarves were like, hey, look, I'm booking it. I want that scenario to begin with. Uh, his rock rock makes mincemeat of the um, of the flame cannon. I think the f the flame cannon actually does a wound back to it, but um, he makes his armor save, and it only had one wound left, which was uh, bittersweet. We were laughing about that. Uh, he did charge in with his one uh, cannon over there into my king, but it only had one wound left, so my king laid waste to that thing and actually laid waste to one more ogre. So he was no longer steadfast, but he needed a five on dice, and he, he rolled it and made it. But end of the day, the results were a Dwarven's Hall victory. We didn't do victory points, uh, per se. It was uh, basically a 1,000 points difference, so we didn't bother looking it up. And I had the objective as well. Uh, so, you know, all, all I can say, it was a great game. It was a fun game. And Ryan is a great, great opponent. So I'm looking forward to going to uh, Buckeyes and really testing our medals. And I'd say against the rest of the country, because um, that is one of the uh, the real larger um, GTs, if not the largest GT that I know of. Um, I mean, you've got OhioCon and things like that, but it's like this. I'm, we're really, really looking forward to this. And when it was a toss up between Southern Assault and this, and. This one. Um, and let's see. So MVPs, the king. King Cassian uh, was just turning around and just killing ogres left and right. And uh, his leadership bubble was great. Badly needed in this game because I was rolling high for my leadership tests. And the rock -a rock The rock -a rock was a Beast. I mean, let's go back to this original picture of the board. Um, it, it ate my left flank. 
come on. There we go. Oh, that's a bad picture. So it, and the miners, I know I didn't even talk about the miners. The miners came on, they charged the back end of the, um, of the uh, horde there, or not the horde, but the bus of the uh, tribesmen, and basically pinned him for a turn before he turned around and did a reform and uh, eat the miners. But, so let's see here. He, he turned around that Ragarok ate Junior, he ate the hand gunners, he made the engineer flee and then allowed the uh, traplings to catch him, he ate the flame cannon and he ate the um, bolt thrower. So that one model by itself controlled that entire left flank. Everything else, if I was going to give it to anything else in his army, it would have been the um, Scratapults for the number that they did to the, on the Deep Watch. I mean, that was just brutal. And for the other one for Dwarven Horse, that Flame Cannon. I was in really, really enjoying the Flame Cannon. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching and listening uh, to, to me here. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to post. And until next time, 